Hi everyone. So um, in today's session, I'm going to talk about um, connected uh, mobile device management for enterprise mobility. Okay. So the agenda is like I'm going to go a little bit about uh, what is enterprise mobility, uh, then connected device management framework architecture, how it fits uh, into enterprise mobility, and I'm going to talk about WSO2's internal mobile mobility strategy. Okay, what we are going, what we are implementing in WSO2. So enterprise mobility. If you look at the enterprise mobility, so um, uh, the spa, smart mode penetration, like uh, two billion devices in 2016. So one fourth of the global population, 2015, one third, 2018. So uh, now, if you look at any enterprise, now this is the uh, landscape. So you have the business. The business already has computer. They have adapted computer in their business. So now these are the stakeholders, and uh, we are adapting mobility into the business. Now, it's going to bring all the stakeholders very close to the business because they have access to their devices. And what is going to happen? So the productivity is going to increase. At the same time, the risk. OK, so now what is enterprise? So people think about enterprise as like, OK, giving access to um, email system and writing some um, basic mobile application. Uh, basically is enterprise mobility. So it's not uh, enterprise mobility. So enterprise mobility, let me explain what it is. So this, if you look at these uh, um, three things, like you have enterprise here, you have devices, and you have employees. Now you have the iOS BlackBerry devices. Now if the enterprise is giving devices to uh, the employees, now we call it as scope. I hope you know about scope. Scope is company owned, personally enabled. Okay. Now if the employee brings uh, device to uh, uh, their company and if the ent enterprise allows mobility, so they, we call it as BYOD. So bring your own device. Now, now we talk about enterprise mobility as mobile devices like iOS, Android, Blackberry. So it's, mo it's beyond that. So it's all about computers, laptops. So if you look at any um, organization, they give laptops. So it's a kind of, what kind of device it is? Cope device. So they also wanted to manage these devices. So it's all about like, then comes into uh, IoT. So um, IoT is also going to come as part of mobility. So uh, Sumedha was talking about that. Now, um, now so many device types. OK, now I'm going to give you the challenges what uh, enterprise is facing as of now. So what happens is, and if you look at any enterprise, enterprise has internal data, and some of the data are in the cloud. OK, so what are the cloud data? Email, Gmail. So some, some companies have Gmail, and um, some have their internal um, exchange server, something like that. Okay, So they have a Wi-Fi network. So this is what is happening. So the enterprise is developing application. And after developing the application, what is going to happen? How do you distribute this application? That's a problem. Now, if you look at iOS or Android, you have to submit your application to a public store. Why do you want to do that? It's your company application. Anybody can see that application, right? Now, how do you restrict that one? So when you download it, you ask for a username and password. That's how you restrict, right? So let's see what are the challenges. OK, now you publish your application to the public store. Then you ask your employees, OK, please go and download. This is a link or something like that. So he goes there, downloads the application. Then this application is going to access the data through your Wi-Fi. Now the data comes in. Okay, this is what is happening, typically happening in any enterprise, right? Now with this single screen, you can easily identify these. These are the problems which the enterprise is going, facing as of now. Okay, beyond this, I I don't think there's no problem. So let's see what the problem is. Data security. How are you going to um, um, secure this uh, data? Now, because these devices are mobile devices which is going to move, like it can be tablets, it can be uh, laptops, these are going to move. It, it goes to rank hand. Let's see what are the data in the next slide. Now, let's see the, what, what is the next challenge, remote device management. So if it is a COPE device, the company is giving you device, how are you going to manage this device, right? Then third is the enterprise store. Why not have my own store? Why should I use a third party store? And the flexibility is I can have one store and publish any type of application, iOS to Android to whatever the type of application. So this is one challenge. The, last, the fourth challenge is 
enterprise application development and management. How, I, how am I going to develop application? There are so many platforms coming in. Firefox is coming in. Uh, so many other platforms are coming. How am I going to develop this application? Okay, this is one uh, big challenge here. The other one, resource management. So within your organization, how are you going to manage or like how do you control giving access to these devices? Now you have Wi-Fi. So, so looking at this, we have so many problems in our WSO2. So we are trying to solve some of the problem, right? So to do this, you need some tools. You have to come up with some kind of tools. So if you look at the market, they will tell you, okay, EMM is the best tool. So under EMM, what is um, MDM? Then you talk about MAM, then you talk about so many other tools are there. So EMM is nothing but a composition of MDM. MAM and so many other tools which can uh, which can entirely manage the application the device side of it okay now um, okay so what is the data security now I, I talk about like data what is the data security security so what is the data you need to identify what the data so email messages or the attachment like you access um, email and it might have attachments that attachment may can be uh, documents like PDF word Excel PPT text browser accessing HTML pages you might be having cookies uh, calendar calendar notes application with databases okay now why this data is sensitive it can be highly confidential like quotation value salary details so it can be anything like it it depends on so it it can have a high impact if it goes to the wrong person okay now how the data can be compromised so device being lost or stolen malicious app stealing the data data leak so many issues are there like so now who can compromise it can be external party it can be the employee himself it can have a black ship inside your company itself okay so the real challenge what is the real challenge development of a platform which can easily plug any device because Every year you come up with new new devices, new new versions of OS is coming, new, so iOS 7, iOS 9, now you have a Windows 10, so many devices are coming. Now if you are going to have a platform which basically is uh, tightly coupled, then you are going to have, face a problem. Okay? The second is provide an interface uh, to a third party application for extension. So you should have a unified API mechanism where these uh, third party application, let's say a HR application which can basically trigger an alert to a mobile device or it can be a, a network access controller which wants to identify what the what is the policy and whether this device has violated the policy or not. So if it is violated, don't give access to the resources. Okay. Okay, so let, let's look at how these devices are managed from three platforms. Okay, now CC, um, even though like we use uh, phone calls and we use application, the way in which these three different devices uh, works for dev enabling device management, right, we are going to see one by one. Now let's say Android. Now if you want to manage this device, right, now you need to basically download a agent application, right, then this agent application communicates to the MDM server and it enrolls and it does all kind of um, uh, the, the usual uh, uh, drill for enrolling, right? Then you want to send notification or you want to basically uh, 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 like uh, send some messages to get information from the device because you can't directly talk from MDM server to a mobile device. Right, so because it doesn't have an IP or it basically it has to go through Google Cloud Messaging. So through Google Cloud Messaging, so we send the uh, message and from there it notifies the application. Then you basically communicate with the device. So this is how it works. Now if you look at this one, the, the problem number one is you have to develop an agent, right? Either use a standard protocol. So what is the protocol? Do they use a standard protocol or something like that? No. So you have to, it, it's up to you to decide which protocol you're going to use. So either use OM or DM or something. So security has to be handled by yourself as the developer has to handle the security. Now let's come back to iOS, how it works. Okay. I mean iOS, you, are, you have a Safari application, you have iOS. So um, uh, by default, like if you look at any MDM um, service provider, what they have usually have is an agent. You don't need an, actually you don't need an agent, but uh, let's see what happens. Now you have an agent, you download the agent. The agent basically triggers something, some endpoint through this browser and basically it does the enrollment. So the enrollment, everything is built in. 
So it is provided by the OS layer itself. So it, so the, the 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 security everything is implemented in the protocol itself. So they have a their own protocol. iOS has its own protocol. So it it's based on certificate, right? Now it goes through. So like um, Android, GCM. Now this guy is also have APNS, Apple Push Notification Service. Then you send the notification, and then you want to. Basically, this is how the communication happens between iOS and Android, right? So it's totally different, okay? Now, so if you look at this, now you see no need to develop an application. If you want any additional functionality, location alerting ring, then you have an agent, okay? Device management is supported in the OS layer through profile system, right? Now, depend, you have to depend on Apple, need to have enterprise developer account, okay? Apply for MDM vendor approval, you have to get an approval from as a vendor. Use Safari to download the profile, security is handled by the OS, so only thing is you have to implement that and the back end, so certificate based. MDM push notification happens through APNS and Apple its own protocol, that is no standard protocol, okay. So if you, if you compare these three different devices, right, now everything is totally different like the way in which it works, the protocol is different, everything is work. Now if you have to write an app, uh, 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 a management uh, um, uh, system, uh, mobile management system, you have to basically, uh, you have to write separately for these things and uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge, okay. So the Windows, this is how it works. So it goes through WNS and then it basically, so uh, I would like to show you a difference. Now in Android, you have to download an agent. In iOS, you do not have to download agent, everything is handled by the OS. Here. You do not have to download the agent, agent is already there in the, as part of the application. So three different ways, okay. Then this is how it happens, the usual thing, okay. Now so you, you need to, no need to develop an application, device management support in the OS layer through, through a built-in application, security is handled, default uh, can work on with polling method, uh, 8.1 supports push notification through WNS, you need to have a developer account, again you have to pay something. Then it uses a protocol OMAD extend, extended thing, right? Then, so the way it, it works is like now we have built a product EMM 1.0. The way it works is everything is tightly coupled. Now you have a plug point, everything is there. Now let's say you want to add a new device, you have to break the wall, right? Again, you have to write all these things, and then that's how it has to, it will work, right? Now we have come up with a new architecture. This is what we started uh, two years back. So we were new to that area and we wanted to try whether this device communication works and somehow it works and this is how we have done that. Now the, if you look at EMM2, now this is like an um, uh, interface sort of thing which has a unique, unique, unique in, uh, interface. You have to implement this interface through an adapter, right? Now you plug it here, then this has a unique, unique um, adapter which can plug, which can plug these devices, okay? So let's say you have a Chromebook or you have a laptop, you have a um, Mac laptop, Windows laptop, likewise. So you can write your adapter, just write all the protocol communication, all these things, UI to everything. Then you basically follow this, um, like it has already a, a implementation. So you have to, um, sorry, the interface, you have to override it, then plug it in, that's it, okay? Now, the advantage here is you can see like you can, it's a pluggable thing, right? So you don't have to change here. So the thing is you have to add a plugin and that's it, right? Then comes like we have an API interface where you can remotely control. So you have a basically like let's say a third party application wants to uh, control this device. You have, a, you have APIs through that API it can communicate with this. So let's say you have an HR application. I was giving an example like uh, HR application wants to do something and uh, NSE wants to uh, get uh, information about this device, whether this is jailbroken or not. Only if it is um, not jailbroken, then you give access, okay? So based on this, this is what our architecture was looking. So uh, Sumaida was explaining about this. So we have the carbon, you have the connected device management framework. And uh, basically, if you look at device management is about enrollment, de-enrollment, and uh, doing some operations on the device, policy management. So all these abstraction layer has been taken out. And you have a plugin, so you write your plugin on top of it, okay? Then you have this device API. Through these device APIs, the external applications can communicate with it, okay? So, um, so 
if you have if, if in your enterprise you have mobile device management or something like you want to have mobile plus IoT, you can have one single uh, console which can basically support all these things. Okay, because the core thing is this one. Okay, so evolution of WSO2 EMM. So we uh, released version 1.0 uh, 1 February 2014. Uh, version 1.0 uh, June 2014, version 2 is expected to be released in November, end of November. Okay. Now what are the core features we have, right? User, device, policy, operation, configuration, license management, uh, it supports BIOD cope separation, identity management, API everywhere. So everything which is whatever the talks you see, like those uh, those areas they explain about how the IA, um, the uh, the security work. So all these things are part of this, right? Okay. So these are the iOS features which we have uh, added here, right? So alarm, Wi-Fi, send message, enterprise wipe, install web clips. Uh, these are some of the features which are available for iOS. And then Android features. These are some of the features which you have for uh, iOS. Okay. So this is the uh, Windows features. Okay, so this is the application store which was talking about the sec challenge number three, right? Which basically has a unified uh, uh, store where you basically uh, publish your application so that these uh, uh, applications can be installed um, automatically through MDM. So more supported mobile types, Android enterprise apps, Android uh, public apps from Google, iOS um, enterprise apps. So these are some of the application types. With one single store, you can have these different types of applications published. So, a connected device manager for a connected business. Now, think of your business. We always talk about connected business. So, this the way we have read, uh, written our uh, device management uh, uh, EMM basically basically fits into your business. So, basically, it basically. Uh, so, let's see what it is now. So you eat your own dog's food. So it's it's basically we have identified. Okay, so normally when we develop any products, we basically compare with the third parties and we list down all the features, or you you um, refer Gartner and figure out okay what is there. But when you implement it, whatever you want to implement will not be there. So what we have tried is, why not we as a company, why not we we identify what the problem we have and what is our strategy and how we are going to implement the using this. So we came up with this. So we had issues like we have, we always allow internet for only laptops, not for mobile devices, right? So our first goal was to allow secure Wi-Fi connection to all mobile devices. The second one was secure corporate devices, which was the issue which we saw in the first slide. The third one there was mobile application development lifecycle management, okay? Let's see how it can be done. Okay, so we basically before you do your before you start doing anything, so you have to come up with your policy. So uh, you have to we have framed a policy. So what we did was like, okay, what are the devices we are going to allow? So we found out, okay, iOS, Android, and Windows devices. Then uh, any router device, just block them. Jailbroken device, block them. Allow maximum of five devices per per, per user. Sorry. Okay. Allow BYD and COPE devices with. Uh, different policies because BOD devices, right, it's your devices. He will be like, um, like uh, he won't allow your, your, your personal device to be controlled by, an, by your employee, right? So because your, per, your, your private data, everything can be shared or something like that. So he, so have a different policy or different policy for each and every device uh, category. So BOD and COPE. COPE is your device. You can do anything you want. Just wipe your device. Everything can be done. Okay, so you can monitor the device. All these things can be done uh, using this. Um, okay, so if you are going with BOD or COPE, now, now no control of the uh, no control to the privacy of BOD device. Okay, let's see. Now, so I'm going to show you something. This is what we are implementing. Okay, uh, so we have a target 2016. We have to implement this. Right, so um, let's see what uh, the issue is and how. Uh, so, so um, the HR wants to create a HR mobile application. This is what a normal enterprise 
wants, right? So they want to create a novel where HR application. How do how do they do that? They call the uh, tenders or they call for developers, external developers, internal developers. They tell them, okay, we want an HR application. Then you know, right? So basically, you have to um, the developer will create his uh, uh, a repository where GitHub, where multiple developers will be developing all these things separately, and there is no control. Uh, it's not a connected way of developing anything, right? So now, how we are going to do this is like the HR goes and creates a project, okay? From there, she will select, okay, iOS, Android, okay. Then, now she is trying to develop HR application. So she goes to the store and basically subscribes to HR related APIs. Okay, she goes and subscribes to all the HR related APIs. Now, what happens is a project template is created. So, for these APIs to access, already an SDK is basically built. So, this SDK will be part of your template. So, for the developer to develop anything, he does not have to do anything how to communicate with HTTP, how to communicate with all these things. He does not have to worry about that one. Then, he is going to invite your developer. So, the developer basically goes there. And basically, he uses his own ID or whatever the ID, he downloads the code, then he compiles the code when uh, at the time of committing or something like that. So, the, um, the, uh, the, the application is uh, created and basically it is it's pushed to the testing store. The testing store is associated with the QA guys who is uh, like uh, they will be using their phone and this application will be pushed to their phones. Okay? Yes. So, then what happens? Now they do the testing. It's a life cycle. So it, they do the testing, and once the testing is done, okay. So so basically the application, uh, they test the application. Then what happens is uh, everything is done. Now the uh, HR manager or the project manager basically um, uh, promotes this application to the production store. Okay. Now the application is promoted to the production store. What happens is this uh, production store will have. So I was talking to you about the uh, the um, MDM which has interfaces, API interfaces. Now, this production store basically what happens is, now when you publish the application, it is basically configured to push this application or basically push this application to MDM. So, MDM has this API. So, basically from production store, this application gets pushed and this MDM already has some policy associated with that. So, that basically this application has to be pushed to the relevant roles. Okay. Now, it goes to the um, MDM and then it it's automatically gets pushed to the mobile device of the uh, employees. Right? Then what happens? Now, you need to have like, uh, so uh, you need to have like, uh, these application has to send some um, analytics data. Right? So, it basically sends some data and you might have to control these things. So, all these things can be achieved through this MAM. Okay? Now, to do that, so we have this, uh, we already have this, some of these things which is implemented, only, only, only thing we have to do is the integration, the toughest part, right? So this is what I am doing now. So I have some time to do that. So we use Enterprise Store, uh, API Manager, and we have this MBAS API, which, which has an SDKs, MAM APIs, and System APIs, okay? So then you can either use Eclipse or Xcode, whatever the development tool you want. So, initially we thought like why not go with code NV because it is an online editor. So, it is up to the developer, right? Then basically use the app manager. So, you would have, uh, if you would have attended the app manager session. So, app manager session is uh, something which basically has stored all these things, uh, uh, publishing of the application, all these things are part of the app manager. Then you have this uh, enterprise mobility manager which uh, with app manager and then you have this um, uh, that is also the uh, um, app manager, enterprise mobility manager. So, this is how you basically, this is how I am going to do and th this will solve my, I, I, uh, basically this will, this is my task. So, this is what I am um, doing. So, the entire, it is like a mobile ERP from starting from um, uh, A to Z, everything is done through that tool. Okay. Thank you very much.